Hey, it's Tony Donaldson here for Electric Bike Action Magazine. Today we're looking at the Bionics D500 system. It's a wheel and battery system that is available for 26, 27.5, and 29 inch wheels. It's integrated into the wheel, so it's not available as a hub only. And for good reason. The way Bionics designed this, they put a giant direct drive motor inside a composite shell. The design here is really smart. Traditional hub motors use the shell of the motor itself to support the weight of the bike. This design is like a traditional wheel with the motor inside. It allows them to use a composite shell instead of metal, which is about two pounds lighter than an all-metal shell. It also keeps the motor cool. It's physically huge, which translates into loads of torque. Though this would work on a street bike, it's ideally suited for a mountain bike. It has to be installed by your local shop and set up right to be covered under warranty. The cool thing about your shop installing and maintaining it is that they can hook it up to equipment that allows Bionics to access it and program it via the internet in their headquarters in Canada. The assist kicks in via a torque sensor and it's really intuitive. There are four assist levels accessible via the detachable console or the thumb controls. In the fourth level, you feel like you're on a roller coaster being rocketed off the line. We were able to pedal a steady 20 miles an hour up a hill on the fourth assist level. Its assist is limited to 20 miles an hour, so if you go above that, you really feel it drop off. It actually fights against you with the magnets going over the stator. The same thing happens if you turn it completely off. With the magnets, it's never completely disengaged. We let a couple of other riders take it for a spin, and they didn't notice anything different going down a trail, but they had a very similar visceral reaction coming back up. Whoa, 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 that's weird. Oh, I feel like Superman. That's amazing. Oh my God. Well, it's unbelievable. Oh. This is crazy. <laughs> If you're descending a hill, you can switch it to one of the four different levels of regeneration. It does put some power back into the battery, but you'd have to put in a lot of miles down a very steep hill to really recharge the battery significantly. It is, however, helpful to control descent speeds on long downhill sections. We used it on a trail where we normally use our brakes to scrub speed, and it allowed us to get a very precise speed going downhill without using the brakes. If you come to a sudden uphill climb, you can simply push the thumb throttle for a good boost. On a few runs of a 12 mile loop with a lot of hills, even at high assist levels, it used less than half of the battery. I'd easily say that you get 20 miles of mountain riding with one battery using heavy assist. In normal street riding with assist level of 1 to 2, you'd likely get 50 to 60 miles. They don't suggest that users remove the rear wheel, but we had to fix a persistent flat. It's easy and in the owner's manual, but you do have to make sure that this little notch on the axle is oriented the correct way. Make sure you charge it only with the supplied charger. If you want to leave your bike in the garage and bring the battery inside with you to charge, you can, just using the supplied key. Before you remove the battery, make sure you have the system powered off completely. If not, you'll scramble the system and make it unusable. Trust us, we did that by accident. You can order online or buy via your local shop for $24.99, and if you decide you want a second 48 volt battery, it'll run you $9.50. Thanks for watching, stay tuned, and check out the magazine for more in depth news and reviews at electricbikeaction.com.